Good morning and welcome from beautiful Scranton, Pennsylvania at the Charles J. Volpe Family Field, home of the Scranton Royals, University of Scranton Royals, I should say. We're BFA Sports bringing you live Baseball U Kickoff Classic. Day four, we're ready to get after it. We have the Baseball U Connecticut Texas Orange versus Baseball U PA Anthracite. Hey, look, starting out good, 115 on the radar. Well, I talk about hot. I knew what a marshmallow at a, around a campfire feels like right about now. <laughs> 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 All right. So I believe we have A.J. Thomas on the mound. At Easton Area High School, 6'3", 155, left-handed pitcher, obviously. Pitches inside for a ball. Everybody starts, every batter, I should say, starts with an 0-1 count. It's facing Matt Buchiro out of Ridgefield, Connecticut. Grandma Buchiro would be very happy to know I'm pronouncing the name properly. Good for you. Hell yeah. Hopefully maybe I can get a lasagna dish out of this. Ooh, you never know. <laughs> Just outside, he walked him. So Pachiro draws a walk. Got to bring up number 45, Carson Drake. He's out of Darien, Connecticut. First pitch is wide for a ball. Six foot two. Listed primarily as a right-handed pitcher and also plays first base. I don't think we saw Drake yesterday. We might see him today. You like Drake. Drake Cakes. Yes. <laughs> Surprised you didn't have any no, this I, morning. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not partial to Drake yeah. Cakes. No. no Butterscotch Crimpets by my Hostess, though. Not Tasty Cake. Because Hostess made them first, didn't they? You don't know so the answer. You seem to know a lot about your uh, bakery <laughs> confections. Oh, man. This ball is lifted to the right side and foul. Just checking out the bat, man. Wasn't 100% sure if that Louisville Slugger Prime uh, stayed together. Yeah, he's looking at it. Hey. Looking it over pretty well. Uh, oh, man. Boy. Wow, that's an expensive that's like, foul ball. Yes, it was. That's a... You know, ever been through that as a, as a parent when the kids like ours used to play with wood, and your your son? You know, it was great that you like him to give back and share things, except for wood bats. No, it would drive me insane. Because that next pitch, when that ball just comes cracking and it's your kid's bat in his buddy's hand, it's kind of a unique situation. Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, do you go to your buddy and say, "Yo, uh, Al, you owe me a hundred thirty bucks for that"? Here goes the runner. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Look at the speed on you, those base I'm curious. Five. I'm curious. I, I know you well enough, so I'm going to ask you to to be straight. Yeah, me be straight? Yeah. So what would you do? Well, I have a story to tell. I don't have enough time because I borrowed my buddy's Walkman back in the 80s. Oh, God. To go down to the gym, down this long hill in college, mind you. I'll tell that story after we introduce Dan Bacciro. Number 54 at the plate out of Ridgeville, Connecticut. Plays the corners, first and third. Secondary positions, outfield. So we got the Bichiro brothers early on. Talk about two young men, 6'3", with speed that they have. They remind sub, me of the... Sub-7s at 6'3". I think they were like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, something like that. They remind me of the Bash brothers, like McGuire and Canseco yeah. oh, back yeah. in the 80s. Oh, yeah. You remember the 80s, don't you? Yeah, I do. I still have a mullet. Because every one of your, usually I, your I still little one-liners goes back in that DeLorean. Yeah, wow. The mullet looks something good now. Yeah. Mullet didn't work out for me. No? No. Good deal here by the lefty. Pitch is high for a ball. 82 miles an hour on the V-low. He's got more in the tank on that. Oh, there's tell. No, you can tell. There's no question. I mean, great pitcher's frame, stands tall, gets elastic, as I like to say, like stretch arm strong, comes off the mound, using every bit of that frame. 
Oh, nice pitch. Oh, right on the inside corner for strike call. Yeah, good horizontal movement. You see that a lot, right? Three-quarter arm slot. Mm -hmm. Ball tailing away. Man, it's got some movement on it. It does have good movement yeah. on it, which is what I like to see. Yep. So Pichiro draws a walk. You got the Pichiro brothers at the corners. That'll bring up number 91, Finn Popkin. Out of Staples, Connecticut, 6-1. This is an infielder as his primary position. Oh, there goes Pichiro. Here's the throw. Nope, fake throw to second. I believe that's Michael Pasco behind the dish. I'll get confirmation on that. Pitch is outside for a ball. Good look high top situation with the Bichiro Bash brothers, second and third. Good RBI opportunity for Popkin. Ooh, oh, look at that movement. Filthy oh, wow. dude. All right. That's a way to end your that, inning. Runners second right. and third. Shut them down. Way to go, A.J. Thomas. Finish it out. We'll go to break. Be back. At the bottom half. Welcome back to Scranton, Pennsylvania, the J Charles J. Volpe Family Field, home of the University of Scranton Royals, but today's home for Baseball U and the Baseball U Kickoff Classic. New pitcher on the mound for, actually that would be the... the first pitcher? Pr first pitcher. No. The starting pitcher. Starting pitcher. Wow. Would be <laughs> J.P. Maurice. Battery mate is Aiden Stern. First batter he will face. Is number 12, Jackson Chowanski. First pitch is outside for a ball. They got you all tripped up. They changed uniforms today. I know. I'm just I'm looking at it. And I'm like I'm looking at the roster and I'm going, wait. I got to tell you, man, the, the anthracite ones are very. Okay, I don't want to censor myself. They're bad bleep. Like, I like them. Sharp. Yeah, they are. Very similar to something you might see at a school down south that will remain nameless. <laughs> 6-1. 
Maurice is high for a ball. 86 miles an hour. Ooh. Coming from J.P. Maurice. Maurice. He's cooking. And that pitch is outside, so Jackson Chowanski draws a leadoff walk. Nine, and they believe that's Axel Gonzalez. Strike three called on Gonzalez. He goes down looking tough pitch to kind of go down on, but nonetheless. Caught the outside corner. I bring up number seven, Ray J. Marmaleos at Lancaster County High School. 6'1", 185. He's a shortstop. There goes the runner. Good jump. He's going to have to return. Chowanski got a nice jump. Marmaleos fouls off that pitch. I'll tell you, man, nice job there by Stern, the catcher. You know, good secondary position. Sometimes guys have a tendency to get up a little bit too high, as I would say, over that 90-degree angle, but not him. I mean, kind of sitting there watching him in his crouch. He's waiting until the last second ball gets thrown over. Um, but good base, good balance. You know, I'm looking at the back of his heels. You can probably see them right there just a little bit, maybe shaded because what you're looking at. But there he is. See, look at that. Boom. Nice job. Oh, nice pitch. Maurice thought he had it. You know, and I think sometimes, too, we talked a little bit about some of the catchers yesterday, but when you have runners on base, the ability to kind of find that balance and be comfortable, block when you still need to, don't let the ball by. Sometimes you get a little too over-anxious realizing that there's a, you know, a runner that you're trying to throw out, but you, you got to receive the pitch, try to still get the strike, and then pop up. And he did that really well on that last pitch. Look at that. Nice, nice play block, by Stern. Dude. He might nice get block. him at first. He he got him at first. <laughs> oh, the umpire. Did he say? He gave a half. That's like kind of like my call. So I didn't. I, I wasn't sure. I thought he got him. Dude, that was outstanding. Outstanding block. block. I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Keep the ball out in front of you. Chwanski's lead's probably going to shorten up a little bit. Here's a throw to first. Well, here's, here's if you're crafty, you may waste the pitch. I mean, you're already starting with an 0-1 count. We work together. This guy's this anxious. Tip your hand, let me throw the. There he goes. Going. Here's the throw from Stern. Oh, did he? Ah, could come up Good. with the ball. Oh, I thought he picked it. Good shoot by Stern. Yeah, we have to throw is. here. Here it is again. That's what I'm saying, man. Look at him pop up. Bang. Ooh, quick. That was a hell of a missile right there. Do I? Oh, if he held, if he held it, they actually had him. Great moving on the ball. See the zip? Uh huh. I like the fact he took advantage of the turf as well. Oh, just inside. Uh, Chwanski will try to go. Oh, I thought it was going to be a throw there from Sturry. That ball bounced uh -oh. right back to him. Mix it up, man. A little bit of a mix up. He thought he was coming one way. The ball ended up going the other. It happens. So Michael Pascal at the plate. At Panther Valley, 6'3, 210. Saw him catch. Actually, he was out there earlier today behind the dish. Also placed third base. I believe the count now is 2 and 1 to Pascal. Kid's working, man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. 
So Pasco with a 3 1 count now. You know, and it's great. Maurice can have confidence. He's throwing every breaking pitch he can here. Oh, nice location. Count now moves to full. 85 miles an hour. Gassing up that tank. Swing oh, yeah. He struck him out. Nice job, dude. Maurice, way to get out of a bit of a jam. Nice work by him and his battery, mate. So Maurice throwing some flames this early morning. We'll be back after this break here on BFA Sports. Welcome back to beautiful Scranton, Pennsylvania. A.J. Thomas back on the mound for Baseball UPA Anthracite. His battery mate is number 10, Michael Pasco. It does look like Pasco there, right? Or is that 18 Henkels? Now I'm looking at him. I'll get a confirmation on that, folks. First batter he will face is Nick Carlucci. A new mill for Connecticut. First pitch is outside for a ball. Look at that sweeping curveball. Man. It starts out in the batter's box. In the left hand of the batter's box. Yeah, great horizontal movement, dude. Man. South Paul has been uh, slurving it, as they like to say, the old slurve. Man. Slider curve. Fastball outside for a ball. Count even at two and two to Carlucci. Carlucci, 6 1, plays the outfield positions. Breaking pitch is low and away for a ball. Count now runs the full. Carlucci had a nice, nice day yesterday. Good single. Shows the ability to go to all fields. Oh, fastball, that. strike three, struck him out in the outside corner. That's a handcuff pitch right there. You now again, Thomas, that three-quarter slide. It runs, it, 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 ran, it ran away. away. <laughs> it ran away, yeah. It's like all your, uh, all the girls in all high school. All the girls school. in high school, yeah, yeah, Came you're right, you. yeah, you're right, you're right. Oh, and they, like, they ran to you, though, right? Uh, nah, I don't want to brag, but. Nah, please. All right, I bring number 29, the pitcher J.P. Maurice to the plate. He's out of Canterbury. He's just six foot five. Strike on the outside corner. It's like a deceiving six five. But yeah. if I walked out there, it would be he's like he's a big dude. Yeah, it would look like Fantasy Island. <laughs> your, your tattoo. I've been practicing the plane, the plane. 
Oh man, that's, that's just a great like, movement, oh, dude. Ooh. It's funny too because it it really forces the batter to be in the mindset that I I cannot get out of this box. Like if this ball comes in, I just got to take it, let it hit me, because Thomas is showing really good run. Here's the two-two pitch to Maurice. Ooh, tough one to lay up, but it did miss. Missed by a little. Just working that edge of the plate. Full count now. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oof. -a. Man, oh man. 79 miles an hour. A deceiving 79, actually. Yeah. AJ Thomas just... Well, again, he's, he's stretching it out, right? He's getting long. We talked about it in, in the first inning. If you can consistently do that, you can get the ball to run up on guys a lot quicker than it appears. And I'll bring up Chris Kennedy out of Staples, Connecticut. Big swing and a miss by Kennedy. Count quickly goes to 0-2 to, to him. Kennedy stood out yesterday in the field, threw a lot of leather. I believe he had a couple. I remember one hit distinctly the opposite way between first and second. Hit the ball hard to right field. Pitches outside for a ball. Count now one and two to Kennedy. He faces A.J. Thomas. That pitch tails away and out of the zone for a ball. So the count evens up at two and two to Chris Kennedy. And a two two pitch from Thomas. A breaking ball out of the zone, but lots of movement. Count now moves the three and two to Kennedy. Another good job there behind a the dish. Catchers coming to play make these guys you know look good win the 50 50 pa battles on the edge three two pitch oh, into the yeah. inside corner struck him out like i said i, I wow. promised john wells wouldn't no, replay I, balls I and strikes Man, but, but you gotta... that's a hell of a job by the catcher right there i mean pasco really brought that ball right back into the corner stiff wrist mm. that'll bring up number 94 jackson tavel at edgemont new york 5'10", it's a catcher in the first baseman. First pitch is over for a strike call. Count quickly 0-2 to Tavel. He hits that one home. The third, across the diamond and making the play and making it look easy. All right, well, we'll get a number later on. Huh? Nice play anyway. We'll go to a break. We'll be back. Oh, we got a replay. All right, we won't be back. Try to help you out. Sure. And all right, we'll go to a break. We'll be back.
And welcome back to the Charles J. Volpe Family Field here in beautiful Scranton, PA. Number 29, J.P. Maurice back on the mound for Connecticut, Texas Orange. First pitch is inside for a ball. 84 miles an hour, picking right up where he left off. Tails away inside and low for a ball. Maurice is facing Jake Anders at Sullivan's Grove. 5'10", 175. Outfielder pitcher. And that fastball. Man, getting up to 86, even though it was out of the zone. Hey, man, let it loose. Two and one to count to Anders. Pitch is over for a strike call. Count now three and two to Jake Anders. And a three two pitch, fastball away. So Anders draws a leadoff walk. And that'll bring up Maximilian Leo. <laughs> what? You are? Yeah. Okay. Le Leo. Leo? I, I think it, Leo. It, I was laughing because it sounded like you weren't, you were like, no. kind of trying to stop yourself halfway. What? I was You're like, trying to pronounce Maximilian Leo. Le no. All right. Well, he's out of East Stroudsburg. 5'9, <laughs> 140. Primary position is outfield, and also he plays second base. Chase back and gets back a plenty of time. Runner holds, pitches fouled the third base side and out of play. Pitch bounces up there and gets away. As Anders moves up to second base. So a runner in scoring position. An opportunity for Maximilian Liao. Not gonna run. I want to say it's, I want, I want to drop the eye and kind of say Leo almost. Hopefully the parents are here. Another 85 mile an hour pitch. Count now full to Leo. And that 3 2 pitch swinging a miss. He struck him out. That'll bring up David Castro, MMI Prep. Six foot, 220, right handed pitcher and a third baseman. Pitcher Castro. Over first strike call, 84 miles an hour. Coming out of the arm of J.P. Maurice. Oh, nice breaky pitch gets him looking. Oh, Maurice just throwing a nasty curve ball. To Send Castro back to the bench. And now that'll bring up number 42, 
Gatlin Hovenstein out of Southern Columbia. 5'11", 180. Left-handed pitcher and a first baseman. Good block there by Stern again. Yeah, real nice block by Stern. It's a very impressive so far with both of these young pitchers. Well, it's kind of what you come to expect 17U level, and especially what we saw this baseball U crew yesterday. I mean, my word. Saw so guys touching 89. Seen the younger brother of a 98-mile-an-hour thrower from mm. Vanderbilt. And, you know, there's going to be uh, multiple teams going from the 16 and uh, 17U to the perfect game WWBA event down in Georgia. Guess what? 128 baseball U players Ooh. have been drafted. Wow. 128 and counting. Obviously coming off of a... A very cool day yesterday is Max Kranich, 17th player to make his MLB debut from Baseball U. He was perfect through five and got the decision for the Pittsburgh Pirates yesterday. We're wondering, well, what happens if you got perfect at five? Well, the rains came. So when the rains came, he didn't go back out there. Pirates win seven to two and lots of pride going on in that household, especially with his, uh, he and his two brothers. Ball grounded short. Here's the throw. And he hangs on to the bag. Nice work by number 54 over there, Dan Buchiro. Yeah, let's take, the bag. take a look at his glove work. Good job, pick up and throw, and then here's your pick game. Mm, nice job. You know the cool part was? He actually used his arms to give him leverage to keep yeah. his foot on the bag. Sure Love did. It. One. Welcome back to the Baseball U Kickoff Classic here in Scranton, PA. New pitcher on the mound for Baseball U PA Anthracite is number 17, Jacob Herner at Eastern Area High School, 6'3", 160. First batter he will face is number 39, Philip Stalzer, McMahon, Connecticut. He's 5'11". Plays the outfield positions and also catches. Oh, nice breaking pitch. No, that's good Herner. stuff oh. by Herner. 63 miles an hour, I, tight spin too. I, I, what I have a tendency to do is put myself in that spot and feel like I'm actually at the plate. And I just <laughs> I kind of felt his pain. He goes down swinging. Comes back 65 miles an hour of nastiness. I'll bring up number nine, Cole Dickinson, the new Milford. It's first baseman, third baseman, stands at six foot tall. First pitch is outside for a ball. And Jacob Herner working with his battery mate, Michael Pascal, behind the dish.
Well, eh, he shrugged that one off. No sweat. Ah, look at him. Another day in the park. He's used to being a big target. I mean, he's first baseman. Swing and a miss. Generally, that's good for fielders to try to get the ball to you, but so uh, puts you as a bigger target when you're up there at the plate, I guess. Count now even at two and two. Oh, oh Lord. Man, oh, man. 12-6 movement. Ooh, Jacob Herner. God. Look at that. Mm. He's just like, yeah, well, it's all right, I guess. Just cool as the other side of the pillow. Number 44, Justin Holmes, now to face Jacob Herner. Holmes out of Staples, Connecticut, 5-10. First pitch is on the inside corner for a strike call. Thought about bunting there. I think he was just showing it. Holmes, a left-handed pitcher, an outfielder. And he fouls that one down the third base side. Count 0-2 to him. I don't know, man. You got these guys here. Like Pat Vigilio coaching and the Mike Guys of the world. They're going to, as Mike Guy said, playing this like it's any other game. Oh, indeed. So it wouldn't surprise me that Vigilio sees that you know, still got the third baseman playing back. A yeah, two-strike count. Yeah. It's a great point how quickly I forgot about the 0-1 count to mm -hmm. start things out. I was actually going to say that early when he, when he showed the bunt and took the strike, but... I didn't want to be redundant too much. The count now two and two to Holmes. And that pitch misses out of the zone. Count now is full to Justin Holmes. As he faces Jacob Herner. Oh, strike three, struck him out. Jeez Louise. And no doubt about that last pitch. So almost knows down looking. Man, all these K's he's putting in the books. Get a silk screen. <laughs> oh, man. That'll bring up number seven, Mitchell Riccio out of Notre Dame, West Haven, Connecticut. First pitch a little wide for a ball. He's 5'10". Plays the middle infield. It's also a third baseman. Oh, that pitch was right at him, and it did. I mean, I'm looking right from behind here. That caught the inside part of the plate. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean. <laughs> well, hey, man, he come in on him. Look, he's trying to go back at it again, but yeah. he did that one missed. Pitchers that are confident to throw inside stuff, it, it draws good attention and for good reasons. So many guys are used to seeing, you know, the put out pitch, trying to be the one, put away, put away, put away. But to be able to handcuff and come inside, especially because at worst case scenario, if you can get inside enough and get the ball off the handle, those are, you know, those usually generate weak ground balls and those are just as good as strikeouts. Oh, man. Not only that, but would you probably agree it makes the outside pitch even more effective. Oh, it sets it up because it, it gets the guy to, to be concerned that he, he tries to back off the plate anticipating you're going to come in, and then as soon as he does, you know, catcher like Pascal can say, all right, well, you're going to back your feet up on the plate, then we're going to come out. And something you could probably see up here is he's in a jam the count, so now his toes are right up on the chalk, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So now let's see where he goes with the pitch. Oh, that one-two pitch broke in nicely, but... Nice fight there by Riccio. So he stays alive. You know, that's something, too, that I used to get on my catcher about. you got to pay attention to where the batter is in the box. And if he makes adjustments, then you know you got him on the ropes and you got to adjust your, your pitch calls the right way. So, again, great. Great job here from the batting standpoint because he's not changing anything. Look, he's, he's still up on the chalk where he should be. Oh, Let's swing and a miss. Struck golly. him out. Good vertical move. Or, yeah, good vertical movement. That thing, even on the slider, it looked like it dropped about a 
a good foot. And when that's late life into the strike zone like that, my word, it's hard to hit. Turner handles himself a great inning. We'll be back. Welcome back as we see a new pitcher on the mound for Baseball U, Connecticut, Texas Orange, and that's number 45, Carson Drake out of Darien, Connecticut. Standing at six foot two. Not only is he pitch, but he's also a first baseman. His battery mate is Aiden Stern, number 25. That pitch is hit hard to right field. That'll fall for a base hit and go to the gap. That might make it all the way to the fence. Oh my gosh, he's gonna still it. run. That's Hankles. Let's pick up Hankles. Here he's oh coming. My. Three. He had an easy triple wow. getting around those bases. Almost like a look at effortless. Dude, he was absolutely, absolutely flying. Once again, I didn't even get a chance to introduce Hankles. Pretty sure it was 18. And so double checking. Yeah, that is Ian Hankles. If I remember correctly, he had a couple big hits yesterday as well. Also doing some damage on the base pass. You could tell by the way he rounded the bases. That pitch is inside for a ball. It's Aiden Stern kind of had a, his back up against the wall with a screen behind him as the ball going all the way down the first base side. And that was Hankels as he scores. Mike Marmaleos now steps to the plate. And a Governor Mifflin, 6-1, 180. And that 1-1 pitch is slam foul to the first base side. So it's now 1-2 to him. Mike Marmaleos is a second baseman and third baseman. Again, stand at 6-1, 180. Oh, nice pitch. Struck him out. So Carson Drake comes back with a... Nice K. That'll bring up number 32, Gabe Evanson at a Berwick Area High School. First pitch is wide for a ball. Evanson's 5'6", 150. It's a catcher as we saw yesterday and also plays the infield. 1-1 one, one pitch over first strike call. Nice breaking ball coming from Carson Drake. Eighty-one miles an hour now. K 
count should be even. I think the umpire said two and two as I got blocked by the <laughs> bar goes here. Has put the screen on it. That pitch is fouled away. Ding. As the bell tolls. Yeah, yeah Bluetooth's connected Bluetooth again. Bluetooth's connected again. Well, at least we know that. Well, DJ Scranton in the house. <laughs> Playing some good music. Uh, listen, I don't think he's days. actually played the same song twice, though. That's what I, I got to give him credit I for. I don't think he has. Count, I believe, is two and two. It's actually full now to Evanson. And the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Carson Drake gives up the big triple. Has the unfortunate situation with the ball, his pitch going off the screen up the first base side, so the run does score, but has come back and really come up strong. Yeah, it's all about how you answer the bell. Got to get right back at it. Well, chop foul by number 12, Jackson Chawanski. And North Schuylkill. 5 10, 2 10. We were talking about Chwanski yesterday. He's built like a fullback. And that's nothing but a compliment. We're talking about a man. Just power. I got that tank like lower frame. Mm -hmm. My shoulders, too. That ball's hit on the ground a second. Scoops and fires, and they get him. The umpire agrees. Good hold there by number nine, and that is Cole Dickinson over at first. We'll go to a break. Be right back. Well, before we go back, I'm going to show oh. you the triple that oh. I mentioned to you. That oh, I, that what you were trying to say? Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. That's okay. Well, I don't, so, I don't uh, understand. So, Luke Hankel. Reed. Here's Hankel's big shot into the gap. Man, he got a hold of this one. Look Here, at that thing. Just that was your inside-out swing leg to mention. Yeah, man. It was. He got, a, he got all into it. All the way to the fence, and then you see him. Steamrolling in the third. I mean, he's practically at third before they even have the ball. Great shot. Step away. Welcome back. Jacob Herner back on the mound for PA Anthracite. As he is working with Gabe Evanson. This is his battery mate. First pitch to number 25, Aiden Stern is outside for a ball. Stern out of Ridgefield, Connecticut, 5'8". Seen work behind the dish today. Also working in the infield yesterday. Holding it down nicely, I believe, at second base. That ball is lifted to center field. Right at the center fielder. Makes the grab. Looks like number 12, Jackson Chawanski making that play. It is Jackson Chawanski. Thank you there, 
Mr. Charles Hope, right on it. Oh, there's a rip by number, f holy cow, Chawanski all over it. Man, oh man, Matt Buchiro put a charge into that one, and great job by Chawanski to chase that one down. Yeah, man, he oh. crushes this ball. I mean, he gets into the deepest part of the park, but look at Chawanski. He was playing deep to begin with, great first step. Let's remember they're using wood bats I know. as high schoolers. And that's all of almost 400 feet to dead center. He pretty much warning track with wood. Oh, my God. Man. <laughs> all right, number 45, Carson Drake. He's on the bump last inning. Let's get out of Darien, Connecticut, six foot two. There's a shot. Pulled foul, though, and out of play. Turn on that one. Sure did. Pitches out of the zone. I believe the count now is three and two. Confirmed by the home plate umpire to Carson Drake. And the three two pitch. Grounded up the middle. Nice pick there and throws and gets him. Good job by Jacob Herner. Yeah, he's just doing a great job pitching the contact right now. I mean, simple as that. And that'll bring up number 54, the other Bash brothers you like to refer to him, Dan Buchiro. He hits that one hard on to short. Here's the throw. Oh, nice pick. Let's give some props to that first baseman. We'll get his number real quick. That's number 42, Gatlin Hovenstein, picking that one at first. One. Carson Drake back on the mound for Connecticut Texas Orange. First batter he will face is Axel Gonzalez. That first pitch is over for a strike call. Carson Drake's batter mate is Jackson Tavel behind the dish. And that pitch bounces up there. Good block by Tavel. Got a ball made its way in. Well, made, it, made, uh, made its way in from the uh, bullpen. How the world did that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Good breaking ball, I guess, off the turf. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Fastballs inside for a ball to Gonzalez. Count now one and two to him. 
actually two and two. Stand corrected. 81 miles an hour on the velo. And the 2-2 pitch. That bounces up there. It's now full to Axel Gonzalez. Craziest thing happened this morning, man. Got here early, 6.45. I, I guess you want to call it the player's lock because it's, you know, it's locked. So someone's got to unlock the lock. And nice pitch. Pitch is fouled, tip the plate. Gonzalez stays alive. So you usually think, like, we're always the first ones to be here. But, you know, when you're kind of quasi-celebrity status, you like to roll in so no one kind of sees you. So I look over, and there's a there's a brand pickup in the corner. That ball sh shot in the gap to right center. Cut off nicely there by the center fielder. But Axel Gonzalez leads off with a walk. Nice, Go ahead. nice stroke. Yeah, real nice stroke. So I, I look over, and I just didn't realize, right? So, you know, some of the coaches and things roll in. But John Wells manages to get Rex Ryan in baseball U gear. Yeah, Rex Ryan. He was wow. sitting in the parking lot this morning, checking out, telling your, hey guys, good morning, how you doing? This and that. So yeah, so even Rex Ryan, part of the uh, baseball U family. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. This guy's connected. I tell you, man, if, if, I, didn't, if I didn't know any better, somehow they're related. Twins? Could be. I think John looks a little better, though. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, the fact that maybe it's his brother from another. Just it like might BFA. Be. Yeah, it Maybe might be. Rex is his brother from be. another. Yeah. And that's why we saw him here. I don't know if he's still here, though, so don't don't be going up looking for autographs. <laughs> Isn't Rex Ryan known as a little bit grumpy, though? I don't see. John's probably the friendlier up, more, I, I, more, you know, Gregarious, if you will. John's a John's a ray of sunshine. He yeah. is a ray of sunshine. Even in the cloudiest of days. Oh, <laughs> oh shoot. Let's introduce Ray J. Marmaleos at the plate, Lancaster County High School, six one one eighty five. Chop foul on the third base side. Every time one of the one of the Marmaleos has come up, I, I feel like belting out to the Queen. It's like Galileo. Marmaleos, Marmaleos, let me go. Yes, he go. I like the name though. That's pretty it's a really cool name, Marmaleos. The funny part is, me like the Alright, we'll finish it up. Ground ball flips the second over to first, but not in time to get Marmaleos. I want to apologize to both Marmaleos families. I made the assumption that they were twins because the Pichiros were twins. Very similar in size, but no relation. Nope. Just indeed brother from another. Brother from another. Very fitting. Just like John and Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if he has any of Rex's hobbies. He's fisherman. <laughs> He's a fisherman. Oh, there's a nice shot to right field. Michael Pascal rounding first and going to second. Here's the throw to second. Marmaleos may score. Here comes the throw. Not in time as Ray J. Marmaleos crosses home plate. To that base hit by Michael Pascal. Hey, great heads up running, though, by Marmaleos. No, no hesitation, trying to force the defense to make plays. And as he does, take every base that you can. Nice job. Mama Leo's. Mama yeah, huh? See, I got you now. Jake Anders. Stepping to the plate out of Selden's Grove. 5'10, 175. First pitch is. I couldn't tell that call by the umpire. I'll have to wait for his his count. We'll call it a ball. It's one and one. Nice, nice breaking pitch from Drake. So it is game one of five today on this magnificent, magnificent Monday. 
sultry. A bit. Like a sauna. <laughs> well, good news is we got to burn off everything we've been eating. Oh, my gosh. My cholesterol level has got to be in a place that is scary. Strike three call. The great pitch by Carson Drake on the outside corner. And I believe that's the fourth batter. That's the four signal from the umpire for sure, but Drake... Dealing. And even one day after giving up a hit, dials it right back in, floods the zone, gets out of the inning. Welcome back to Scranton, Pennsylvania for the Baseball U Kickoff Classic. New pitcher on the mound for PA Anthracite is Logan Yukabowski at a Hazelton Area High School, 6'3", 205. He's also an outfielder besides a pitcher. First batter he will face is number 91, Finn Popkin. Pitch is fouled away to the first base side and out of play. Popkin now with a 0-2 count. As every batter starts with an 0-1 count. And a 1-0-2 pitch bounces up there, I should say. And count now one and two. Rounded up the middle, backhanded. Here's the throw. Oh, nice play all the way around. As Marmaleos, I believe, playing second. No, it's actually not Marmaleos. Let's see what number. That's actually Axel Gonzalez at second. But a great job over at first base by number 42, Gatlin Hovenstein. Look at him come down with that. Nice, nice job. This guy knows how to play his position. First pitch is over for a strike call to number 42, Nick Carlucci. And that 0 2 pitch bounces up there. It's now 1 and 2. Two pitch to Carlucci. Now evens up at two and two as that misses the zone. 
Yeah, 80 mile an hour pitch though. Seeing some good velo, man. It's consistent. That pitch has lifted the right field. Coming in and making the play. Is the right fielder, obviously, but as soon as I get his number, that number zero or eight? I'm gonna go. Max, that might be Max. Oh, it is Maximilian. Maximilian Leo. Number 29, JP Maurice now steps to the plate. And Par said he checked. So count one and one to him. Maurice started off this game on the mound. Had some nice movement on his pitch. It's great action. That pitch catches the outside corner. As Maurice thought the first pitch was a strike. <laughs> he was ready to walk off. Counted actually one and two to him. And here's the one two pitch. That bounces up there. It's now two and two. Two pitches high inside, it's full. J.P. Maurice is also an outfielder and an infielder besides what we saw on the mound today. Which was great showing for him. And he walked him. So with Maurice at first base, that'll bring up number one, Chris Kennedy. Kenny, another standout in the field yesterday, throwing some leather. He's out of Staples, Connecticut. Plays the middle infielder, middle infield, I should say, and third base. He fouls that pitch away. Count goes to 0-2 to him. And I don't believe it's he's listed secondarily as a right-handed pitcher. I don't believe we've seen him yet. We may see him today. Get my short-term memory is terrible. Well, wait, I mean, don't they take? There's like a there's like stuff you take. Is that what's that called again? Uh, see, I can't even remember. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> Here goes the runner. Maurice is going to get there easily. Got a great jump. I can see the commercial too. Well, that ends the inning. We'll go to a break. <laughs>
Welcome back from Scranton, PA, the Charles J. Volpe Family Field, home of the University of Scranton Royals. And I've told you many times, home today and this weekend for four days, home for Baseball U and a kickoff classic, day number four, new pitcher on the mound. For Baseball U Connecticut, Texas Orange is number 39, Philip Stoltzer. Out of McMahon, Connecticut, 5'11". Stoltzer is an outfielder and also a catcher. First pitch is fouled away. That's by Maximilian Leo out of East Stroudsburg. Now one and two to Leo. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Nice pitch down and in by Stalzer. Yeah, that was a great put out pitch there. Brings up number 20, David Castro to play as he fouls the first pitch off. Count goes the 0-2 to him. Castro at MMI prep, 6 foot 220. He's ran a pitcher in the third baseman. One pitch is just outside for a ball. Stalts are working that outside corner. The count is now full to Castro. Get a double check from the umpire. Nope, even a two and two. Now it's three and two to Castro. Strike three, struck him out as Stalter comes back and gets him. Nice pitch. Back to, yeah, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Stalter. Good stuff, man. I love it. Both on backwards keys. He's dazzling these guys. Got to get him thinking. I bring up number 42, Gatlin Hovenstein. Pitch is long away for a ball. And that pitch bounces up there. Count now two and one to Hovenstein. And here's a two one pitch. Outside for a ball. Count now runs the three and one. Three-one pitch out of the zone, so Hovenstein earns a free pass to first base. Ian Henkels, Henkels of the triple variety, steps to the plate, hit a shot in the gap to right center. Yeah, he absolutely tattooed that last ball that he hit. Got out there fast, but he was moving around the base pass. I was following him all the way around, and I was like. And it was almost effortless. Ball's still going. <laughs> He's got sneaky fast speed. Remember correctly, he was actually burning up the base pass yesterday. So 
That kind of combination. Gap to gap hitters. Definitely can find a place on somebody's team. There goes a the runner. Here's the throw right on the bag, but not in time. Tobinstein steal second base. Yeah, good first jump and read. No hesitation. Oh, nice pitch. Oh. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that will be four batters. We'll see you in a few here from University of Scranton. All right, we're back as Logan Yukabowski back on the mound for PA Anthracite. That first pitch is lifted oh, high okay. to deep left field. That's got a chance to go. And, oh, what an effort by the left fielder. That's Leo. He took him all the way to the fence. Man, oh, man. That was an absolute rocket. That was number 94, Jackson Tavel, putting a charge into that one. Dude, he crushed that ball. And I'm, I'm looking at, uh, maybe it is. I thought maybe, the, I could feel the wind on us, but that's the fans here, I guess. Very little wind today, so he just put, that's all him. Yeah, dude, he put a charge into that baseball. Holy cow. Mm. I was hoping to get my first home run call. Yeah. But what a wood bat, though. Ball's hit on the ground, foul on the third base side. I would say it's pretty darn good. All oh, 320 feet or so. What a wood bat. Pretty impressive. Man, that was a shot. I'll cue that one up for... Uh, all right. The shot between breaks for you guys. I wanted to double look at that shot, but outstanding effort. What you probably missed was the effort from the left fielder. Yeah, that's what, he, again. He went all the way into yeah. the fence. And I kind of mentioned that as well because that was a heck of an effort. I mean, he makes that catch, and I'm going to have to keep myself under control because I would have lost my mind. Philip Stotzer at the plate. Ooh, nice pitch on the inside corner, gets him. Not 
That'll bring up number nine, Cole Dickinson, Cole Dickinson out of New Milford, Connecticut. Pitches inside for ball. So the count evens up at one and one to him. Lebowski working with Gabe Evanson. This is battery mate behind the dish. Oh, nice breaking pitch by Lebowski. I'll re-say his last name, Yukabowski. Yeah, the way that ball was carrying that he hit out there, I thought the uh, RK Chevrolet Tahoe was in jeopardy. <laughs> that pitch is inside for a ball. Or the Stern family vehicle. I think it's parked next to the trailer. Is it? I believe so. I mean, dude, that is a, that's a tank shot right there. You guys got the rock star parking, huh? Celebrity. Did Rex Ryan give you that spot? Yeah. You had it reserved for you? Yeah, I, you know, wasn't afraid to sign an autograph. Going to get him to sign a baseball before, oh, I, uh, before I leave. <laughs> I've been trying to been trying to dig deep to, to put something together. I, I did have uh... <laughs> <laughs> You got to put it up there. You got to. You got to. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so he draws the walk. He does draw the walk to number 44, Justin Holmes. <laughs> First pitch is high for a ball. <laughs> Runners at first and second. That bomb by Jackson Tavel. Zikabowski chases. Tavel back to second. That pitch is inside for a ball. You know, it is tough to uh, I give our camera guys a lot of credit because this high nude sun, the glare that comes off the turf, sometimes it is not easy to track a ball, but I think you'll enjoy this shot that goes all the way out to the left left field checking out the left fielder made a one heck of an effort and a play out there by the fence yeah once again and is maximilian leo out there in left swing and a miss count now full to holmes oh strike do you say strike three no, i don't know it's a mystery. It is a mystery call. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's check out this nice shot on the replay. Mm. I mean, just absolutely crushes it. And then you'll see how far it went out in the left field. Look at this. Oh. I mean, look at the effort. Right up right against, against the, the fence. fence. Man, he crashed into that fence. Yeah, that was a hell of a hit. A nice play on defense by Lau.
Welcome back to the Baseball U Kickoff Classic, day number four here at the University of Scranton, home of the Royals. Today's home for Baseball U and on the mound for Baseball U Connecticut, Texas Orange is number four, Justin Holmes. 5'10 at Staples, Connecticut. First pitch is outside for a ball. As he faces number three, Mike Marmaleos at a Governor Mifflin. Nice frame at 6'1", 180. That pitch is cued foul on the first base side. Count one and two to Morales, and here's the one-two pitch. Outside for a ball. Count now even at two and two to Marmaleos. So once again, he's facing Justin Holmes for Team Connecticut, Texas Orange. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. So Marmaleos goes down swinging. That will bring up number 32, Gabe Evanson in the Berwick Area High School. 5 6 150. He's been working behind the dish today. First pitch is over for a strike. Call in the outside corner. Count quickly 0 and 2 to Evanson. Oh, nice breaking pitch from Holmes. Fouled off by Evanson. Still 0-2 to Evanson. His home sets. And the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss on a filthy breaking ball. Struck him out. Wow. A 12-6 breaking ball to get Evanson swinging. And that'll bring up number 12, Jackson Chowanski. North Schuylkill High School. Chwanski holding it down in center field today, doing a real nice job. Is outside for ball. Count now one and two to him. So home sets. And the one two pitch. Strike three, struck him out looking. Chwanski might have had a little debate on that one, but nonetheless. Firefeld, he got him at the knees, and that'll bring up now Axel Gonzalez. First pitch is over for a strike call, so Justin Holmes pounding the zone. Early on in his stint here on the mound. Gonzalez, nice base hit the right center field earlier. Just low and away for a ball. Count now one and two to him. As Holmes gets a sign. And a one two pitch. Ground ball to short. Here's the throw across the diamond, and they get him. So nice play by the shortstop. That'll take us to a break. Back.
All right, we're back. Gatlin Hovenstein now on the mound for Baseball UPA Anthracite. Hovenstein out of Southern Columbia. Working out of the left side off the rubber, 5'11", 180. First batter he will face is number seven, Mitchell Riccio. Swing and a miss. So Hovenstein starts him off. Now in the hole 0-2. The 0 2 pitch. Cued off the end of the bat. Charging hard and throwing on the run. What a play by number seven. And that is Ray J. Marmaleos at short. Yeah, here's another look at it. Marmaleos. Great charge. Marmaleos. Great charge. Look at him. Oh, that's beautiful. Get across the diamond and bang. Mm. Isn't Magnifico in there, too, in that, in that song? So it would be perfect. Marmaleos, Magnifico. It would be. I well, think that's a good word. Magnifico. <laughs> really nice play. All right, that brings up number 25, Aiden Stern out of Ridgefield, Connecticut. Lefty versus lefty. Oh, nice breaking pitch. Swing and foul tip. He squeezed, didn't he? Said foul. I thought he squeezed. Nah, I think oh, the ball okay. popped out there. Okay. All right. So Stern stays alive. Count now 0 and 2. Ball hit the short. Marmalayos with another opportunity. Look at Stern get down the line. He's oh, safe. Man. man. Talk about a hard 90. We said this yesterday, and he shows it again. Yeah, you'll see him flash into the picture, but look him out of the box. No right hesitation. Out of the you know what he reminds me of? He wasn't real fast, but he was out of the box hard all the time. Lenny Dykstra. Agree? Yeah, I would say that's a good call. Uh, nails. I mean, he's like, he's nails. He's the reincarnation of nails. I love it. Good call. I'm all jacked up on that. Like old Mountain Dew. Hopefully it didn't take it too long. To <laughs> I'm awake now. Okay. There he goes. Here's the throw. Nice throw. I think they got him, and they did. What a shoot by Evanson. They got the speedy stern. Yeah, you'll see it right here. Comes up firing. Mm. Good call by the umpire right there on the call. Nice tag applied. Nice play all the way around. Matt Bichiro at the plate. Good look at Everson. That's a nice look at Everson. Pitch bounces up there. One of the things that's being overshadowed with the defense is actually Hovenstein Saying his name right now, Hovenstein just uh, having himself a good outing so far on the bump. Good breaking stuff. Good action. Keeping the batters off balance. And Bichiro draws a walk. Really working that lasagna with Grandma Bichiro. Yeah, you're, Hopefully. you're trying hard. I'll give you that. I'll tell you, man. Grandma, I know you're watching. Here's the pitch. First pitch is out on the outside corner for a strike call. Carson Drake at the plate. He faces Gatlin Hovenstein. There goes Buchiro. Here's the throw by Evanson. Not going to be in time to get him. So a runner in scoring position for Carson Drake. 
Umpire says it's one and two to him. And pitches inside for a ball. It's now two and two. I have a feeling Matt Pachira is going to be looking to go to third here. Got a nice size lead at second. I was trying to make a make hole here more. for right look at batter. It. Keep, he's keep the, he's keeping it, taking steps. There's a shot to right field, taking it pretty deep. Oh, and wow. that's going to be over the head. As Carson Drake put a charge in that one. Bichiro will score. He's going to try for three. Here comes the throw. There's a chance it could get him. And he, they didn't get him. So Carson Drake with a sliding triple. Man, that was a heck of a hit. Another guy just put an absolute nuke. That's into it, and maybe we can back it up just a little bit. It's Alpo Taco power, man. Yeah, man, this is awesome. See if we can get it here. This ball, he just put an absolute charge. Look how far this one went. Wow. Yeah, he sent Jake Anders all the way back. Anders gets it in quickly and recovers nicely. Yeah, no, no doubt. And then he slides in. No helmet. Oh, nice. He hit it hard. All right, so before we go to break, real quick, yeah, let's time to play a game. All right, yeah, sure. So one of the two pictures that you're about to see on the screen yep. is John Wells, the leader of Baseball U. Okay. The other is his long-lost brother, Rex Ryan. All right, let's see it. So which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> one of these guys is John Wells. I, I think the guy on the right, actually. No, I can't tell. Oh uh, well, I can't tell. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't. I can't tell. I, I, I. Well, I know the answer because I obviously I made it. But I mean, there is a hint in there. There is a hint. Might have to do with a little bit of one of his favorite colors. Just saying. Uh, so on the right. Oh, you'll find out. Step aside. Justin Holm is back on the mound for Team Texas Orange. And that first pitch is, oh, nice cutoff. Here comes the tough play. Marmaleos legs that one out. That's Ray J. Marmaleos. Love the fact the third baseman cut it off. Playing aggressive down there at third. Just couldn't handle it. But a great effort nonetheless. That's not one of those mental error plays. That was just one of those plays where he was being aggressive. Good play, though. Number 10, Michael Pasco at the plate at a Panther Valley. A runner at first base. That pitch is on the outside corner for a strike called. Pasco behind in the count, 0 2. That 0 2 pitch is outside for ball. Count now goes to 1 and 2. It's home sets. And the 1 2 pitch, and there goes the runner, Marmaleos. Here comes the throw, not in time to get him. Marmaleos gets himself a stolen base. Count now even at two and two. Here's the two-two pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Man, nice, nice start here. Second inning of work. Feeling it, the lefty. Yeah, even though there's a runner on second base, Holmes has been keeping the batters at bay for PA Anthracite. Well, he's changing up the eye level quite a bit, which is what I like to see. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, Marmaleos is going to score. These are the kind of things that happen when you're aggressive on the base pads. You create havoc. 
Yeah, it's a baseball you calling card. I mean, we've seen a lot of aggressive base running uh, all the way back to Friday. I mean, these guys have been on point. Put pressure on the defense any which way. It's like a signature move of just about all their squads. Jake Anders at the plate. That pitch is laced to right field. Coming in hard and oh, oh what wow. an effort. That ball was slicing away. Great hustle. Oh, great effort by number 49, Matt Bacchiro. He almost made a spectacular play out there in right field. Yeah, man, he was laying all out on that one. But nonetheless, nice, nice piece of hitting. Yep, by Anderson, nice job. Love watching batters go the opposite way. They may have him picked off. Got him in a run down. Anders might beat this one out. Nope, they got him. Again, being aggressive, sometimes over aggressive, and credit to the Connecticut crew. All right, so they're like, hey, not a problem. Get a little greedy, we'll take the out. Always tough facing a left-handed pitcher too. When you're when you're aggressive like that, and then you kind of get yourself caught in no man's land. That pitch is lifted to center field, coming in hard and making the grab. Oh yeah, nice job there. And that is number 54, Dan Buchiro. The Bash brothers holding it down. They are in the outfield. Take a look at this hustle play. So between the two of them. Make two. One makes almost a spectacular play, and the other one makes a real nice. That's not a routine play right there, folks. One. All right, apologies everybody. That closes out game number one for Monday. We'll see you after this short break for game number two.